This episode of Ergo is brought to you by Cards Against Humanity. They asked us not to read an ad, so we didn't. Enjoy the show. What up, what up, what up, what up? Hello. You hear the excitement in my voice, don't you? Oh, my I'm a little upbeat. I'm You're happy a, for this one. one. One might call you giddy. I wouldn't. <laughs> I, would, I would not be that one. But somebody could. You're listening to Ergo here on WHBK, ErgoRadio.com. I'm Kiss. I'm Damon. Shout out Post Loud and shout out Wizard Radio. We are so here doing what? what we do. And what we do is live long form interviews with folks reshaping the culture of our city for the more equitable and the more creative we have. Man, I'm, I'm taking over. I'm very, very <laughs> excited. Y- y'all know I get excited when, we, the get, when we get some like a new a new lane to discuss, right? And this guy we got here is has been tearing up the internet. Um, and and just on some this shit is just raw, man. We got corporate in the building. Everybody makes some noise with corporate. Blah, 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 blah. Blessings. I appreciate it. A pleasure to be here. So we always like to start with um two questions, two part question. Mm-hmm. In this time, in this season, today, this week, whatever, um, how is the world treating you and how are you treating the world? Oh, man, I think it's a, a a blessing going both ways. You know what I'm saying? I, I got the content rolling pretty consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of a lot of people not too happy with me not dropping a Chicago video last week, but they know how I'm coming. Like, if it ain't right, you know what I'm saying? If mm-hmm. it's not perfected, you know what I'm saying, visually and editing-wise, I, I just got to wait on it. But, you know what I'm saying, we should be decent for this week. <laughs> you hear? So, so you know. for those who not in tune. Yeah, give the context here. <laughs> for those who not in tune, we got corporate here. Um, and he, he's been creating some some real dope video content for social media uh, for the last year. So so really, like, humorous videos that people know under, like, the hashtag Chicago niggas be like or Chicago be like. So if you ever seen any of those, I'm sure they came in your Instagram timeline or your Facebook feed at some point. Indeed. We got the man here with us. Um, and so I want to I wanna start with, with, like, framing what you do as art because that's, that's really how I see it. And uh, I'm real big and real, I get kind of like nerdy about language sometimes. Mm -hmm. And as like a native from the South side, I think something that's real specific about our culture is that we have this creative way of always expanding our our dialect and our language to the point that motherfuckers can't even really understand it (laughs) (laughs) if you die from around. And um, I think the, the, what is the, like the, the, the standout piece of your work is that you have like captured and you have an understanding of that language and you use it as a way to kind of like tell the stories of what happened in everyday like Indeed. Southside Indeed. Chicago Indeed. life. Uh, so yeah, that's my little like. So yeah, let's. <laughs> now that we my introduction. We also have a, a uh, dedicated I, portion at the top of the show. Where gas we just up. gas up it's the gas. It's all gas. That's, that's the, the thing first we like do. five ten minutes. You gonna get hella mm, gas. Yeah. So <laughs> just, just know that that's, that's the point that we we're at right now. But in thinking about that in the like the the art and the craft of the language. Um, was there a point where you realized, like even before you started making videos, where you were like, oh, the way I speak is a beautiful thing? Indeed. Um, I would travel to different places. I know specifically I was in um, South Carolina for mm-hmm. about a, a year and a half. My mom had moved down there in um, 05. I, I slid down there to kick with her for a little minute around 2010. And I had, you know, I made a lot of friends down Just there. Just like high school age? Um, 2000. I you know I graduated in 06. Okay, okay. So yeah, a little, so little, little bit after high school. Oh yeah. God, fake so. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> a lot of, you know what I'm saying, and the friends that I made down there, you know what I'm saying, they'd be like, man, corporate, what are you saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I always kept that in my mind. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? That That's interesting how Chicago really does have their own language. So um, around 2015, when I first started doing the videos, I knew at some point I definitely wanted to do a video just talking about how Chicago speaks, yeah. you know what I'm saying, most commonly. And, you know what I'm saying, when the opportunity presented itself, more so when I thought about it, coincidentally, I just dropped it and it just went from there. So I, I, we definitely we, we want to get back into some of your backstory. But I want to talk about right at that point when, like, you first put out a video or two, just the idea. Mm-hmm. It was probably, like, what, like a, a minute long, two minutes long or something? About two minutes and some change. Yeah. And so what what was the point when you went from I, I, I did this video, I did a few, to, like, I am a, a consistent 
content producer, like, do you, and then started like writing out and planning out the scenarios because it gets more in depth instead oh, of God. just conversational over time. Most definitely, and you also um, make so many of them, absolutely, so like, and, the, and the editing like increase. So I, I, yeah, it looks like it went from like an organic like absolutely. viral type shit to like a, a real artistic <laughs> project. So that transition, I'm really, I really want to know about. Most definitely, um, well, my primary function is music, and the video started, you know, what I'm saying as a marketing tool in the first place. So mm -hmm. um, after I dropped that first Chicago installment I had come to find that I had found a niche or a wave that I created and that I was able to ride um, I realized that instantly you know what I'm saying <laughs> so I immediately <laughs> yeah. part two part three won't, 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 and we was gone like you knew it because of the response or absolutely. because you felt yeah the traffic you know what I'm saying the response you know what I'm saying one day I dropped the video the next day and you know, ain't you Buddy ass that, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, like, it was crazy. Everybody was hitting me up for this and that, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, I know I had found something. So yeah. I just wrote it and capitalized off of it. So as a as a music guy, as a rapper, is it hard sometimes to be known as like a, a viral internet content creator, like in terms of validity? Because the way you, do, you know, the, the rap shit that I've seen, I, I kind of like see it as like some street consciousness and it, it, mm -hmm. it almost is like a, a different character from the corporate, from oh, the God. Chicago niggas be like. And yeah. so is, is it hard to balance that sometimes? Um, it's definitely been a process. You know what I'm saying? I I was, I could understand why people, especially early on, labeled me as a comedian. Um, but I, I had to make strategic moves as far as when I incorporated the music and how yeah. I incorporated the music. And I know that, you know, and I always knew that in order for people to take me seriously as an artist, that music, the rapping had to be on God level. <laughs> yeah, no, it's You true. know what I'm saying? So I, don't, I, always, I don't know if you've heard, there's a lot of people who rap. Yeah. Everybody's yeah, rapping. So yeah, I just yeah. had to make sure that I stand out, like, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they know it's real. This is the oh. perfect opportunity for me to announce my upcoming Christmas mixtape. Oh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. I thought we had contractual. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's not happening. He's, not, he's legally not allowed to rap. And I wrote that rule. <laughs> and that was in, in the bylaws. So, so you don't consider yourself a comedian? At all. At all. At all. Do you I'm consider also yourself a funny? Oh, um, that's Oh, okay. Yeah. Screenwriter. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the, the reason that these videos are successful is because of the written content. Mm. All of my videos are planned. Mm. Like, I'm not... Like, whenever I've come across people and they be like, let's do a video right now, I get super nervous. Like, my head start <laughs> yeah. knocking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I plan everything. I can't. I could, but I need time to think, add, take away, Edit. mold, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know what I'm saying, the, the idea before I record it. They're single camera sketches. I mean, we're mm -hmm. saying they're viral internet. No, they're just, they're single camera And you're usually holding sketches. the camera too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> single cameraman, single camera <laughs> sketches. So I want to, before we go back and do like the, the whole history and trajectory, you said mm -hmm. screenwriter. Is that something that you had, let's say before you started making these videos, was that a job that, or a role that you were interested in? Something you had thought about? Never really thought about it. Um, I think even being able to screenwrite comes from being a rapper. Mm -hmm. I say witty things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's like, oh, that was that was cute. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just comes from being a witty person. Yeah. And I just happen to, you know what I'm saying, be able to use that to, you know, produce, like, high-quality, you know what I'm saying, situations. I wonder how camera. people think about being a writer in general. Because I think, like, historically, at least... For people who aren't like in the industry, you're like, if you are doing this, if you are successful, it means you're the person in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're the person writing the words. But I wonder with more and more people making things, you know, with the tools that you have made things, whether that's changing. So whether people might take writing more seriously. I don't know. Just a thought. You think like, do you think there are more people who are like, oh, I could be a writer now? Absolutely. Like I, 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 maybe not like a screenwriter, but writer in the big sense mm -hmm. of like having content come from the intentional written word, whether it's on your phone, oh, whether it's, you know, whether it's editing your tweets and making something out of that. Like, I think oh, that, I think we think because pen and paper is, like, becoming less significant, mm -hmm. that, like, literacy is as well. And I don't think that's the case. I think, I think, I think you're a good example of, and I'm, I'm glad that you highlighted the writing aspect mm -hmm. of it. I'm doing, well, actually, what I'm doing, anybody could do. Honestly, I don't mm -hmm. even think it's so much about me being funny. Chicago is funny. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Hell like, yeah. I, how I come up with the ideas is I'll think about them. I, I just randomly think about things. If I laugh out loud, then I know it's something I need to record. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make what's funny to me. That's what being funny is, for yeah. the record. You know I mean, that, that is, I think, for anyone who's funny, it's not like, 
nothing comes out of the blue. Like yeah. that observational, yeah, out your ass. that 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 observational thing of like this thing that everyone just says is the way things are is like absurd and hilarious to me. Oh God. Um, so let let's 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 stay on that for a sec. You said you didn't. You don't think of yourself as a comedian. You think of yourself as a screenwriter. Have you always been the funny kid? I have. Yeah, I had I a have. feeling. <laughs> yeah. What was uh was there like a certain report card comment that you got every every report card? Well, I, what it was when when I you know what I'm saying first started elementary school, I I was just the student of the month. You know what I'm saying line leader. I always got to watch Ooh, the board. Line leader so is, like was, you know what I'm saying. I, <laughs> you ran shit as man, the line leader as far as that's concerned. You know what I'm saying. And my pops. My 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 mama had eventually forgiven my pops for being a goofy at some point, and he came back around when I was in fourth grade. And my pops has always been like super funny, like just doing the most. And he kind of like it, it rubbed off on me, and I found out that it was always in me to be a clown. Mm. So then, you know, what I'm saying I start being a clown, and even once I got into high school, like I know my freshman and sophomore year in high school. Which if I could go back, I would change it. I was so much of a clown that motherfuckers thought I was stupid. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was just doing the most. Did it like, get you in the jams? Man, I mean, I don't I don't know. I just feel like at, at the beginning I was I was trying too hard. Yeah. Just just doing it just as, wasn't necessary. As a lot of freshmen and sophomores do. Man, don't, don't beat yourself up too much. That's kind of what I it had to, to mature at mm-hmm. some point. So by my junior year and senior year, I was a little more together. But my freshman and sophomore year, I was cussing at the teacher. I was just doing the most. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I remember one instance in, in particular, I, I think it was German class or uh, social studies or something. <laughs> And, and the fact I'm, that you don't know if it was German or social <laughs> Right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Life was a blur because I was just doing too much. You know what I'm saying? And, and I might remember... Might have been in English, might have been right, in German, who knows? Just tweaking. <laughs> and, and, I, and I remember I'm, I'm sitting at the, day, at the table, I'm doing my work. And the teacher, he, he knew... I, I feel like he wanted me to say something because he knew I was always giving him trouble anyway. He was like, uh, Mr. Price... Why, can, you can't be more organized. Why are your papers all over your desk? And I remember I was like, do I like a fucking foul cabinet? <laughs> Price, get out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just, it, I, that wasn't necessary. Like, I was doing too much. You, de- you definitely won that argument, <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's always such a rough moment in a classroom where the teacher has to concede that they took the L. Yeah. Man, he, just he, like, he looked like the goofy. The only goofy. way he was able to get a W was to tell him to get out. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, which is a weak move. Everyone right. else in the class right. knows that's a weak yeah. move, but it's the only tool in the toolbox. <laughs> what, what high school did you go to? Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I went to Hillcrest. Oh, and, true. Um, my junior and senior year, I went to Corliss. Okay. So, okay. and where in the city did you grow up? Um, on the during my uh, elementary school years, I was on the West Side. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, during during a regular struggle, Mama had got a new job at some point. My folks came up, <laughs> you him. So that's when we moved to the suburbs for like two or three years. Then you know, life came back around. Busted you, we hood. Get your ass up out of here. Mama lost the house, hood. We back to the land. Yeah. So you know, up and down. <laughs> South Side majority of my life though. You were you were actually doing narration like your videos your whole childhood, correct? <laughs> Low key, <laughs> and then mom, we took a U turn. Oh, for real, for real. So that's a. I, I get to that. In a second. So one one thing I want. So a lot of your shit, I think, makes things that otherwise ain't funny mm-hmm. really funny, Indeed. right? And so I th- I think the the two themes that like come the most is like kind of like just the violence and the conflict mm-hmm. that happens in the hood. And then also like the gender dynamics mm-hmm. and some of the problematic ways Absolutely. dudes can be with women. So what what is your like actual relationship to those forces and how you got like such an intimate understanding? Is there like something you're trying to express I by grew finding up in the humor? It. You know what I'm saying? Some stuff I experienced myself, some shit I, you know what I'm saying, observed or was a part of. Like I I try to touch on everything. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's so much to Chicago, you know what I'm saying, with the violence to the promiscuous women. Um, man, everything. Childhood, you know what I'm saying? Childhood was special for me growing up in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? I know I touched on that with my last video um, about my first fight, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, how did you cast a uh, a, a little you? How did that oh, go? Oh, God. So um, I, I, I definitely, uh, definitely shout out to Sean Redwood, the coordinator for the whole time shot tour, you know what I'm saying? Largest school tour in the city right now. Um, so I definitely, you know, touched down to different elementary schools and high schools or whatever. And I had went to a particular elementary school um, in a hundred somewhere. 
trying to remember which one it's it hard was. them elementary school names blend oh god all the man it's, it's so many of them <laughs> it's so many yeah. of them and I, I remember seeing this one the, the one that played the bully he just looked at like the bully that I knew <laughs> yeah. when I was younger you know what I'm saying for those I'm, of you who haven't seen it the casting is incredible because Usually you would think the bully's like the biggest guy. Nah, he's like, sure he yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, you was like playing your own like big brother, your yeah, own yeah, guys yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. And um, I seen a little guy that you know what I'm saying fit the description of me as a youth. So I'm like, oh, huh, you feel me? So I hit the school up like, man, I need to rock them. Ooh, they hit the the parents. They was drawing off the whole little situation. <laughs> Pulled up, we knocked that out. Like you know what I'm saying. It was real cool. <laughs> no, it's interesting. So you know, it's kind of to think about that question. Um, and the the act of putting on screen and then shaping and editing things that you've experienced in your life, like are there are there is the intention to showcase it? Is the intention to criti- critique or like criticize certain pieces? To like if there if you were to describe what the goal of making these is beyond exposure, beyond giving platform for for the rap side, like what do you want these to do for you and for the world? The general goal, um, in addition to it being an effective marketing tool for for my mm-hmm. um, music, is to make Chicago smile. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just too many reasons to frown. There's so much negativity that you know what I'm saying surround the land, and you know whenever something happens, people are so quick to say they're ready to move. Mm-hmm. Or oh, we move into Atlanta. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Or I don't want to be here no more. Woo woo. But you know what I'm saying? With these videos, people that aren't here anymore, they wish they were back here. And people right. that are here, I'm like, man, it it this is a decent ass city. It's cool. And I and I like that feeling. You it know does seem like if you were a transplant from here to somewhere else and you saw that video, it would be like yeah. the best feeling in the Absolutely. world. Like, oh, this is a little piece of home. That <laughs> it makes people me. visit, want to come back and visit, or people that ain't never been here try to see what's to the city. So, so. let's say going back when you're a teenager. What are whether it's videos or music or comedy? What what is it that made you smile? Music. Yeah. Yeah. Who I, are you, I, who I, are you listening Kanye. to? Kanye. Kanye is my number one. You know what I'm saying? Source of inspiration. How has your? We've talked a lot about this on and off the show. How has your Kanye arc of appreciation been? Like, where, where, where are you, you at with Kanye now? now? I'm a, I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty two. <laughs> you feel me? Like. Like, a lot of times when people was disappointed with Kanye, I was never disappointed with Kanye. I don't mm-hmm. feel like his music failed at any point. Even when he was going and doing the most ranting, I didn't feel like there was anything wrong with that. I felt like there was a lot of validity to what he was saying. Mm-hmm. I did not get disappointed with Kanye, and this is all honest. I did not get disappointed with Kanye until, shout out to my brother Chance, but he Chance put up that M. And Kanye was nowhere to be found. Mm. And I know, you know, Kanye has always been a big supporter of Chicago and yeah. South, 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 sad. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, but where where were you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and that that hurt me. My feelings was hurt. Yeah. Like, and Chicago you know what I'm saying? State joint too. That was the one that really That was got the me. one that was tough. You know, there was the whole campaign to try to they you know, they defunding State. Chicago State. Oh, God. And, you know, that's where his mom was the chair Indeed. of the department and all that stuff. And, and, like, while that fight was happening, he went on Jimmy Kimmel and, like, talked about how his mom was from Chicago and didn't say anything about, like, the people and the, and the kids and the, and the fact that it's the only black school in the state. For real. So, yeah, that, Man. that's sad. Pablo actually hurts me. I just don't. I, I, just I, musically, that shit feels. I, I, think, I, thought, I thought that shit was great. Like, I, I, I've been following Kanye from, you know what I'm saying, Kanye, the college dropout, when college dropout came out, it was a new type of music. Mm-hmm. It, it was a lot of violence and shoot him up. He was just came out neutral as shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that, and that encouraged everybody that wasn't in the street life to, you know what I'm saying, yeah, get on the mic. Voice, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It would have really been an excellent them. album name as well. Just neutral. Neutral. <laughs> oh, God. neutral. Like, <laughs> but I, I mean, uh, I, I guess the only benefit of that I can give Ye at this point is maybe he gave behind the scenes. I'm hoping that's the case, but I know that hurt me. Like I, I didn't hear nothing about Kanye doing anything. I know I can, I can, you know what I'm saying, identify with his situation and put myself in his shoes. Like when you're at a certain level, of course everybody gonna expect you to say the world. You can't. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm at this small level that I'm at, and every time I pull up to the to the red light, the bucket boys expect me to cash them out. <laughs> right. I can't cash all you little niggas out. You know what I'm That's saying? That's a lot of buckets. Like, I understand all my trap booming, you feel me? But and that shit be, that, that hairs up you got to give, like, you got to change. Oh, that I'm, is, that I shit be the worst out, feeling like, ever. I'm at the light, I done passed out four bones already, you feel me? <laughs> they call on folks from the other light, like, this <laughs> y'all tweaking. That's actually, that's Just actually. sprinting up the E-way. With the like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I understand. I think we need got 
no bucket. You was just over there. Oh, God. <laughs> so I like, I understand, like, you can't save everybody, but like, I just feel like even with the Chicago State situation or even with helping the Chicago public schools to yeah. stay up, where were you, my G? Yeah, I think I think you brought up an interesting point, placing yourself into it. Mm-hmm. That got it, because, uh, you know, you popping, but I imagine you still are like, in a lot of ways, still living your regular Most life. Definitely. All the day to day. You mean? But, but your shit booms, you yeah. know, and so... Metro booming. And so, like, I know just day to day, people have to look at you almost like as a celebrity at this point. Oh, God. And, and, and like, you got it. How does that conflict with still being a regular, everyday function person, but having kind of the attention or expectation of somebody probably living beyond your means? Man, I, I've experienced that, you know what I'm saying, in, in a little way. Like, for example, um, I was working at the post office, and it was a dirty job working at the post office that I was at, you know what I'm saying? And um, so, in, in what sense, as much or as little as you'd like to give, what made a dirty job? Like, I was working in a distribution center, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't imagine how dirty mail is. Oh, you mean physically dirty? <laughs> yeah, physically dirty. <laughs> I thought you meant, like, maneuvers oh, and finessing. God, no, it was, like, like, dirty, like, you know what I'm saying? So you wear old clothes to work. <laughs> Motherfuckers that catch me on my work clothes and just be looking like, damn, I guess that internet shit ain't paying off. <laughs> fuck is you talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Or I didn't even see him. Like, just somebody ran on the comments like, I seen corporate in life. He dirty as hell. <laughs> but it's just like, <laughs> oh, and, and re- when I, <laughs> when I, when I popped out, you on can't co- get in the comments back. That I, 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 I can't let them bother me. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like, bro, you called me with my work clothes on, yeah, my G. Yeah. Like, speak, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of comments, what's like some of the, not the, I mean, obviously people gonna say bullshit, but what's some of the like funniest comments you get that like, Really tickle your face. You know, I know that shit gotta be funny as hell. I honestly, at this point, at this point, you know, what I'm saying, um, a lot of the comments, majority of them are uh, positive. But I'll have to say what kind of gets under my skin a little mm-hmm. bit. I don't let shit get under my skin, but what gets under my skin the most at this point is that it's uh, the negative comments that I get come from men. Mm-hmm. Like, why your lips so pink? <laughs> <laughs> and what's only, wrong with you the only people wondering who that? raised you you know what I'm saying like your eyebrows like yeah. what <laughs> and it's not women it's the niggas like you niggas disgust me I just want to let you know that you niggas disgust me but yeah I have to say that's what really blow me the most in the comments is with men commenting on my physical oh, appearance please. you ugly <laughs> If a if a female and I've even addressed that in a freestyle before, like, I, and I called the freestyle ugly as fuck, like you know what I'm saying, like just addressing, like, if a female said that's just what it is, but if a nigga said it, that's just some other shit, like you know what I'm saying, like y'all, I, I don't know, I it's think also that's a what very particular me the most. takeaway from a video. Yeah. It's like I find you hilarious. I've watched it's them all. So much going on in the video. <laughs> But get three niggas got lip. robbed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But them lips, though. <laughs> like, wow. We got, we got like, plot lines, subplots, <laughs> camera work, all that. That shit be blowing the fuck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, the comments be decent. Like, they be decent. Has that ever, like, been, like, notable on, like, the funny tip or, like, some, like, comments that you like? Do people, like, add to the material in any type of way? Or, like, this happened to me last week. Um, How can you get that? I, I get a lot of people that, man, they just be like, man, that shit 100% authentic. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? My fuckers putting their stories into the comments as far as what happened with them. Um, I, all types of shit. People breaking up in the comment, <laughs> getting together in the comments, you know what I'm saying? Using a video to, you know, somebody may not have been answering their call. You, you so, blew up somebody's you know, spot before. Like, all types of shit. Like, some videos got upwards of ten or eleven thousand comments, and they just—it's just all types of shit that go on in the comments. That would be so. really funny. If someone sees someone as like an extra in your video. They're like, "You said you weren't on that corner." <laughs> oh, God. Then... Right, 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 right. Like that type of shit. Or, like, or like, or it's a video about cheating, and nigga be like, "Yeah, I swear to God." Right, and that right, girl right. see it like what? <laughs> exactly. Like women getting upset with they nigga in the comments. Like it's just a lot that happens. You got to set up like a direct message system just for whole people time. Like, like it's yeah. definitely club corporate. In the <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> I go oh, so God. so with that, like, you know, the the with people relating to the authenticity of the story and you identifying as a screenwriter, are you looking forward to like writing feature length or short films? Cause you even had some of the joints where like who you had you had some with Rico Reckless, you had Indeed. some with like Louie, I think that was more like plot driven and not just like first person Absolutely. shit. So are, is that the the vision or the plan you, you aim it towards? Um I'm currently writing a movie. 
Ooh. Yep. Uh, definitely trying to get that done ASAP. I, I, I could be the fourth lead from, you know, uh, oh, or X or something, you know. Here's, a, here's you, a fun fact about Damon resume. that our listeners already know. Damon uh, had a central role in the film uh, Roll Bounce. Not wow. central. I was a principal. Though. I did get my own chair. Oh, that's dope. You know well, my the, sh- the shorty's throwing the water balloons. Yeah, yeah. I'm the leader of that little crew. Amazing. Though. Don't <laughs> cross him when he's got a water you balloon. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, so uh, what can you say about Because anything you can say about it or... or Maybe not like give it away. My but my whole that's part of my mar- marketing plan. I don't like to give out too much because mm. they they don't know what's coming. I, you know, a lot of people they always announcing this on the way that on the way yeah. what's coming. Like, I think one of the things about my brand and what you know what I'm saying help it to be so successful successful is that people just don't know what's coming, when it's coming next. Like, I just come out of nowhere. Yeah. with stuff like it, I can honestly say there's some sh- shit coming up with the Chicago video. They're not gonna see coming. Like, and you, you know and you avoid putting to be continued at the end of your videos and then never Absolutely. continuing it. That I is, did do it with one though. Did you did you continue it? Indeed. Okay. So that's, you know all that's all okay. I can ask. That's all I can ask. I've done it before. It was actually two Chicago videos I had back to back. One with um, I I, I linked up with my man and that. he had a female with him, and and I'm like, man, what's too shorty? Woo woo. Like and then she he's like, man, what shit. We gonna be a shorty career. We could link. It's when then, you showed up with the bottle and oh shit. Oh God, right. That was a two part <laughs> joint. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely had that. That was probably one of the most, like, like important to the culture of Chicago. Like running hoes. Like that was just so important. I had to touch on that. So, yeah, that was. Did you cool. get any any pushback? From Absolutely. Women on that, what? absolutely. There was a lot of controversy in the comments. You know what I'm saying? People that's not from here be like, "Oh, that's right." You know what I'm saying? With yes, me being at the door, trying to like, man, I'm trying to get in, pull my man's out, see what's to that. But shit. but with that, yeah. like where we are in the world now, with all the like, you know, uh, I think in, in increased viewpoint on assault, and understanding and cons- what consent, that is. Any ways do you kind of see or question or view it as like a uh, a, a legitimate criticism? I mean. In the in the world that we live in in a day, everybody's so sensitive, bro. Like, so to some extent, I don't get no fuck how motherfuckers feel. Like, I just do. Yeah, but so there's, I'm not, and this is not a pushback or, mm-hmm. a, but so there's the critique about sensitive to like the language people use, but then there's also the like just because this is what people do mm-hmm. doesn't mean that that is not also like it can be the common thing mm-hmm. and also be a problem. At Absolutely, the same time, you know but I, mean? I know my one of my things is that I have to touch on everything. I right. can't not leave something alone because it'll ruffle some feathers. Yeah, no, because it's real. Most commonly, I say and do things that people think. Right. Even something as simple as I did a video, you know what I'm saying, in the jerk chicken spot. And um my thought was it was they they the person behind the register had offered me to order the woman that I was with some um Alfredo. Mm-hmm. And in my man, I, I had, you know what I'm saying, narrated my thought like, well shit, bitches love Alfredo. <laughs> Like it's I, like I I just I say what this is people can't deny that a lot of the shit I say and think is what people are thinking they just won't say. So I think that's true, and I think and like why I started up with I think why it's it's such beautiful art is because you can make the painful or something that's Absolutely. problematic funny. Yeah, and like legitimate, and I'm kind of like you know the politically aware. If like you mm-hmm. listen to the show, even me, I have to like. I have to like put that down. You oh, have, you get to the you get to me, but I think the the one thing that is important to note, especially if you compare like the the problems with like harassment or so with women to like the violence, right? Mm-hmm. Like even when we make violence funny, mm-hmm. there is a, a central understanding that it, it, it is wrong. wrong right? It's something we're most definitely, change. most definitely. Um, and so, do, do do you see them in the same way? Is there like uh, a critique of the way? Then being Absolutely. like two sides That's of the right. same. Form. Absolutely, yeah. because. Um, even I have to say one of one of the videos that I critiqued the violence in Chicago to the to the to the highest extent was Black Chicago be like part twenty three and that was where um, I played two different characters one was a street person and the other one was someone trying to talk sense into hmm. the street person mm-hmm. I think that 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 was why I was really hitting that issue in Chicago yeah. the most. Mm-hmm. And I and people most commonly know that um, I actually turned into a real song called On Phone Now. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? It's just pretty much just questioning yeah. why you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that was real heavy. So not only do I, you know what I'm saying, make you smile about the situation, but also make you think yeah. from time to time as well, a lot of times. So. It's a tough balance to, Absolutely. to, to walk. So I want to... 
jump into the craft of it a little bit because I mm-hmm. think when we met, the way that this got set up was you came through Chance's open mic. Absolutely. And, and I heard you talk a little bit about it, um, but everything being shot on your phone and you moving between a couple apps. And mm-hmm. I, I think it comes across very quickly. Like one, this was made with intention, but also like the craft of your editing is like really, really impressive. Was this something that you had any training in on a computer or anything? It was just experimenting no. in the in the just apps? experimenting. Um, it was you know as you can see the videos, the editing definitely yeah. went up. That mm-hmm. was just learning, yeah. like you know what I'm saying personal learning. Like I and I still more to learn. I look forward to you know what I'm saying moving from the uh, mobile iOS to the desktop because that's a whole different monster. But man, I, as far as like the mobile, I, I, I damn near mastered that for real. <laughs> Some people don't even believe they off the line. What's the uh, <laughs> what's the apps that you use just for iMovie, uh, Video Rama, and Video Shop? Okay, yeah, because I mean it's just so. I, I think sometimes we get stuck, or at least I get stuck, because we do all this audio stuff, right? And like I know how to do that, but the video feels like very daunting mm-hmm. to us. And it's not that it's not impressive, but it is cool to see that you could like use that tool that effectively do all that kind of stuff and, and make it really like it's not even about it looking professional it's about it working as Absolutely. as a piece to watch right it's not like oh this looks like a movie it's like no this looks like a thing that was made on a phone perfectly yeah. wonderfully yeah most yeah. definitely so I, I want to talk about like how you even heard that so you, you know you mentioned you've been going to elementary schools mm-hmm. and you know you was at the the you was at open mic mm-hmm. um how, how did that come about of like outreach and 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 engaging with the youth and what is basically like the the goal of your interaction and what have you experienced in doing that how did that come about and, and what are you bringing across in them it's something i always wanted to do um a uh, um, good friend of mine business partner now um by the name of Sean Redwell he had a shout out definitely shout out and he had approached me with the opportunity and said that he wanted to do a tour and allow me to headline it I'm like, oh, man, that's dope because I've been wanting to get into the schools and talk to the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things is that, you know, as a youth, you don't really listen to the adults because they don't understand. You know what I'm saying? But the difference between me and the adults is that I look like them and I talk like them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I relate to them. I'm going through the same things that they're going through. So they're more receptible to listen to what I have to say. So I want to be able to get in and talk to him. So um, he gave me the opportunity to do it. He's like, man, what you want to call it? I'm just a whole time shot to a <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? Put it together. And I remember my first stop was at the Cook County Juvenile Center. Yeah. And it was just it was just a blessing. It at the school in there at Nancy B. Jefferson? Um, no, at the actual like, juvie. In the, yeah, because there's a yep. school in there, but they also do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, it was just a blessing speaking with the youth and, you know what I'm saying, getting to hear what's on their mind. You know what I'm saying? Like in... I just fell in love from there. So from those experiences, let's pretend like some of the people hearing this are some of the youth you try to reach. Mm-hmm. What are some of the messages that you like, the central messages you try to get across in, in them spaces? That, that they can do anything. Like I, I built a whole brand that's a problem out here mm-hmm. just off my phone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I Even though it looked like I'm, you know, just playing all day, like I'm a very competitive person. Mm-hmm. Like everything that I do is calculated, it's strategic to when I drop peak times, peak days. Like yeah. my plan is to just fuck up the competition at all times. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like whether it comes to the rapping or the visuals and everything, and I feel like that's what keeps my content on point. Like I'm I'm all I'm just consistently motivated to do better and push the envelope. How do you deal with tiredness? Man, I just got to make it work. Um, especially, uh, I, I resigned from the post office about a month ago, um, pretty much with just all belief in, you know what I'm saying, what I have to offer. Congratulations, for my brand and first everything. and foremost. That's, That's a big that, deal. That's not no definitely. small deal. I appreciate and it. And you don't have to wear those clothes anymore. <laughs> oh, you know, I'll be decent out here now. <laughs> now you just post at the post right. office in very nice fits. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Man, so... Um, what was the question again? Crackhead uh, yeah, moment. <laughs> just the uh, <laughs> idea of like with that competitiveness and with that drive, like how oh, you tired. how you balance. Oh the, man, the yeah, and... it, was, it was hard. Even when I, you know, saying I remember mean, I was doing twelve hour days at the post office and still managing to pump out videos. Yeah. Like and and being a full time father is re- well mm. like rough. You know what I'm saying? But it's like what kept me going is that I knew what I had coming to me and yeah. I know what I deserve. 
And I know one day it'll all pay off. Yeah. So even through the fatigue, like I just had to keep, you know what I'm saying, pressing forward. So yeah. shout that's out what to, I was doing. Definitely shout out to you and, and your kids as well. Man, that's blessings. beautiful to hear. So one thing, without getting too much in your pockets or, or giving away too much of the game, mm-hmm. for folks who like see internet content and want to do it, what can you teach people about the hustle of how to like monetize that? Like what are some basic things you've learned on how you can you can provide for yourself off being creative online. Well, um, that's one of the biggest things about my um, brand is it being a business. You know what I'm saying? That's why my name's corporate because I'm a business. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? We overlook that part. I spell it with a K because no I'm different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, I Facebook don't pay me, so I had to monetize my moves. You know what I'm saying? I I, I charge to you know promote in the videos, to be in the videos, um, to host events. Now I can charge for verses, charge to just share to my page, like to do promo posts, promo ads, like I just put a price tag on everything. Mm-hmm. So we were know. just talking actually before you came in, just on our own stuff with a whole other project about how like weird that process can feel of like deciding the monetary value of your platform or your time. Mm-hmm. Uh again, like you don't have to say the dollar amounts or but what was that process like? Cause you know, it's one thing when you're doing a job at the post office and you know what the hourly rate is, or even if you're like getting signed to a label and you know what people get their contracts for. But when you're doing all this, you're kind of just out on your own. Uh, were, how did you know your value basically? Um, I had to come up with it on my own. You know what I'm saying? I knew over time, you know what I'm saying? I Because I know in general, you know what I'm saying, business and brands, they want to put their products and services in front of a crowd. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So as my crowd grew, you know what I'm saying, my prices changed. At first, you know what I'm saying, it may have been four. Four fifty, you know what I'm saying for to to be in a video or something. Now it's like eight fifty between eight fifty and a thousand, depending. Um, Sponsorship, cut the check. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. Um, and you know I'm aware. I I pay attention to all my numbers. I get probably like two hundred and eighty some thousand follows on my um like page and like a hundred thousand on my um Instagram. Well, who's counting? You know, like you know what I'm saying like and I and all those numbers contribute to the prices. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying even with the verses. Um, the verses is a thousand, and you're not only and and that's going up soon. But you're not only paying for the actual talent, but you're paying for you know what I'm saying my people. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's they listening to my shit. So if we do something together, then they gonna you know see what's to you too. By the time you hear this, it probably won't be a thousand no more. So so yeah. oh, up, up, up the check, cut the check. <laughs> you feel me? What's the uh what's the goofiest business proposition someone's brought to you? <sighs> Because I bet you get some <laughs> yeah, really some fun ones. <laughs> I mean, I, I I just take it that maybe people just don't understand a business like that. Like, I didn't have my foot. Uh, I want to do a video, and I'm just like, oh, okay. They, um, I give them the price, and they be like, um, I I I had a, a hundred fifty. I beg your pardon, <laughs> because see, my whole thing is you're coming to me for a reason. There are a lot of people that do videos. Right. I'm a fu- I've I've. Made it to a point where, and, and, and motherfuckers know I'm the humblest one around. But at the same time, I know what I got to offer. I'm yeah. a fucking brand name in this city. Right. You're going to have to act like it. You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm not going to argue with you about my price. Right. If you don't want to pay the shit, move around. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I know what I built. Like, you got to pay the cost to be the boss, my G. Yeah. If yeah. you want corporate in your fucking video, you want to be on corporate's platform, you got to pay the cost. Yeah. Pee it. <laughs> So oh, how? Yeah. <laughs> no, let's let that breathe that for a second. Crazy. I had to vent for a second, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Yeah. no, it's real because you got you know you got kids to feed. Though. You hear me? Yeah. And you want to design water bottles? Apparently, yeah. that's a little Kanye moment oh, there. God. I like that. I feel like, <laughs> really got my Zayn Low on for a second. <laughs> right, I got I got another one. I was going to say this for later, but I, I think it's interesting. So it's kind of a three part question, but it's one big question, right? So mm-hmm. the the themes we kind of cover, and if there are more themes that I'm missing, let me know. But the themes that that we kind of cover is like the conflict and violence like relationships between men and women and then the language right Mm -hmm. does that seem accurate or fair so of like the three kind of like central themes of the the, video oh god yeah yeah so in those three things now that you've uh, addressed it creatively so well for the couple of years what have you learned about about those things about them so about the conflict so those kind of like three Mm -hmm. different answers or it could be one big answer as well Man, in general, I, I I learned Chicago funny as fuck. But like at the, at the like, you know what I'm saying? How we how we talk, how we look, you know what I'm saying? How rough we are, 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The attitudes that the women have, you know what I'm saying? Or how promiscuous they can be. That shit funny. How thirsty niggas be to, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> fuck with them. Like, um, the violence is a serious issue, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, are, like, in the, like, interpersonal, like, if you're, you know, walking down the street now and you're watching people interact with each other, are there, like, because you've been writing and recreating and reimagining those interactions... Are there things that you see now that you probably might not have seen a couple years ago? Absolutely. About this? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I pull inspiration from all around me. Yeah. The the video that should be coming this week, that came from a conversation I was just having with my mans. And that'll be out by the time this drops. So yeah. That, that, that's Most that's definitely. Perfect. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, we were just having a conversation and then boom, 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 boom. Then one thing led to another. I'm like, all right, we got to record this. <laughs> So, so yeah. going back to the language thing for one second, um, you know, I think a lot about as someone who's not from here, the the like legibility of the city, whether that's like what people write on the walls or the way people talk. Um, and then I think about in comedy, people laughing for the wrong reasons. Right. So is there ever a piece? Who do you think you're making your videos to? And is there anyone who you don't want to be making your videos for? Oh, it's for the whole world. Chicago appreciates it the most, but it's for the whole world to get in tune. One mm-hmm. of the things that inspired me behind the videos is um, the movie Chirac mm-hmm. and how like inaccurate it was. <laughs> yeah, like it was just like was it ass. wasn't even funny. Okay. Like it was it was level. offensive. Yeah, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. Like what was offensive about it to you? I mean, I think we all agree. But what from was Chicago, offensive? like it the there you didn't even hear the accent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying, ka. Yeah. Right. Like you didn't you just didn't yeah. hear it. I didn't. I, I actually I couldn't even watch the whole thing. I think one of the characters had a ball head. <laughs> like, huh? <laughs> Where was the dread? Yeah. Where was the pellies? Where was anything that was the, the culture. Underst- like the culture was not there? Yeah. From what I understand, it was a great movie. It shouldn't have been called Chirac, though. And it also was not a great movie. <laughs> I, feel oh, like, I feel like you was being political. That was that. <laughs> With that. So, uh, so uh, Spike again. Oh, yeah, yeah. F- no, nah, yeah, fuck Spike. Oh, but God. uh um on on back to the to like the learning like, like let's let's stay on the language so like if you was if like a college b- brought you out and would like do a lecture on Chicago lingo mm-hmm. right like do you have like is it just is, do you just understand it naturally yeah. or are you started to like break it down I could, into a system of how it works or how you how you could could like teach how it how it operates. Um, I, I definitely understand it down to a science. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? If, if I needed to do a lecture on it, that'd be no problem. Actually, um... Cut the check. You hear me? <laughs> I'm giving you other products. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, on January 17th, I'm um, going to Madison Elementary to actually um, uh, go into an English class to mm. actually take the lyrics from on phone mm. and break it down. Oh, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? In a way so that it's better understood. Like, in a way that you would study Shakespeare. Right. Mm. That's how I'm going to be doing on yeah. phone So, English is definitely one of my strong points. So, it's, it's right up my alley. Dan, how do you think about that, the language breakdown stuff? Um, I, th- I think it's a lot of, like, I think, like, more than than just like slang, right? Because every city, every place you go has their own like slang or mm-hmm. new ways of work. There's a grammar mm-hmm. to yeah. it, right? Okay. And it, and it's also more performative, right? Like you could talk with your hands in a way or just make sounds like, I will wop, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and so there's a, a mix of like changing grammar, like the way we use ass, right? Like mm-hmm. dude ass, bitch ass, oh, like, like, like we, 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 I don't, I don't know grammar well enough in the regular sense to like do the translation, oh but I think it's it's a way that we really break grammar uh, and then perform with with like tone because there's a lot of Chicago melodic, language that yeah. you could say the same word and it mean three different things like decent right like mm-hmm. you could say short, you know shorty decent as hell or, or yeah. how you doing your game I was decent or, see but in other states they'll look at decent as like that's it yeah, yeah. right you and, know what I'm saying we could too right like but in Chicago decent is like top of the line like that shit decent <laughs> but what you say it like that you gotta put the tone <laughs> into it oh god cause it, cause it was like cause if he was like yeah I was, I was you know I was had them wings you like it's just decent. Oh God! You know oh God! <laughs> and so, like, it's a lot of tone. Yeah. I think moving grammar and how that shit works, but I don't know enough about. But grammar. I think about that the Kendrick line, the speaking a language only we know. They think it's an accent. Yeah, oh God. like it's not an. You like you're saying this isn't an accent. This is a whole. Yeah, you other should write language. a book, Manji, because like, because like we, we should codify it. Like, mm-hmm. like I think you. I, I've never seen. Decoded. 
I've never seen yeah. nobody, right. I've never seen nobody else do the language the way you do. Man, and I him. think I think putting it in a book is how language like becomes uh, valued or valid, right? Oh, like when you write it. Down. Even that being said, I do. There is something that I love about that it that it isn't. A, it isn't a translation, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's not for. If you don't get it, you might not get it. You know, it. it's right. not for it's right, not right, right. for me as a white <laughs> transplant. I can I still find it funny and anyone can enjoy it, like you said, it's for the world, but like you're not translating how people talk for other people to understand. You're mirroring and reflecting back the, the way people talk to themselves. Yeah. So then right. they can see themselves in it. It's not just like, you know, to use the like big academic language, like it's not for like a certain gaze. It's not for my eyes, right? Mm-hmm. It's not for my ears. Okay. Uh, it's for the ears of the people it's who you're ears. describing, right? <laughs> you know? And that's something, you know, in the 119 episodes we've had on this show, you know, there's some people who do that better than others. And I'm not saying one is inherently better than the other, but I think what you do is powerful in a way that a lot of people can't do, right? Because the access to be able to make things, sometimes you need to be, in order to have that access, you need to be translating Mm-hmm. And you just said, you know, I have a phone. That's all I need. I yeah. don't need these other tools. I'm going to just speak to my people. Another I, 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 Now I'm giving you suggestions, which you might not write. <laughs> but <laughs> another idea that you probably have heard before, uh, the, um, the, the I don't know what you call it. Did you call it corporate news? Where you was doing like the Chicago newscaster? News. Chicago oh, News. Where you were the newscaster yes, and sir. the like person getting interviewed. <laughs> and like they were about fictions, right? But it was really showing how we tell stories. Mm-hmm. You ever thought of like, Doing real news and real stories from that format, like oh, like, that's a, so like funny. A, a show, I, I've a news show. Yeah, that, I've thought about a lot of different, you know, what I'm saying situations that's synonymous with that that I could, you know, what I'm saying present professionally to really, you know, what I'm saying show Chicago like. So most definitely on the way. Here's a question for you that goes back to something we we're talking about. Um, you know, so if we think about these as sketches, and then we think about the history of sketch, I mean, our whole both of us. The person is Chappelle, right? Mm-hmm. Were you a Were you a Chappelle show fan? Over, like I used to cry like that. <laughs> yeah, because it comes across. I mean, that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. What uh, what was it about it? Were there favorite sketches you had? Man, I can't even really recall. I just remember. I remember one time I hit my head on a fireplace laughing so hard about <laughs> some shit. Like I just this shit. He was just fucking genius with that shit. Yeah, just genuinely fucking funny. Yeah, like who so. else you find really funny? Martin, I, I I was at the laundry man last night. They had Martin, <laughs> like that shit was fucked. Like, and it, and it got me to yeah. thinking. Like, don't be surprised if you see like a a Chicago video or a production from me with my phone. That's actually like a fucking sitcom. I'm talking about yeah. even when you say certain things, and you hit a laugh in the background. Like I'm with <laughs> that shit. I was thinking about that because that that does seem like the next step, right? Because we're talking about like single camera sketch, mm-hmm. but there's no reason why you couldn't do, like you know, tracks. a 15 minute TV shit, like oh, the God. whole the whole thing. Slight, like That'd do a 15 though. minute joint. That bitch bust. Oh, okay, cool. Them other 15 10 minutes hood. That's paid advertising. <laughs> yeah, no, you put commercial <laughs> breaks. <laughs> like you know so what I'm funny. saying? Like and be <laughs> and I be on that. So I, I'm actually thinking of putting that into into work as well like i love it so we, so we got some like uh building blocks of like inspiration or or like lineage so you talked about uh pops being funny uh we talked about Chappelle and martin uh either on the hip hop side you know as a rapper or and kanye as well uh is there any other people who you see yourself like in their lineage whether it's like from afar or like directly in your day to day life that inspired this work or or you feel you like know? you feel like you're building on what they make yeah, chance mean? most definitely. Mm-hmm. Even with him out, keeping an independent route, um, mm. man, I I definitely admire and look up to him, and I appreciate him for you know what I'm saying even reaching out. Yeah, how did like, your link whole time? Like even with you saw that video you did where you talked about him take, taking people to the uh, he might have with the Walmart joint. He might have because <laughs> I think even before that, like I remember one day I was in the studio and my mom fucking phone just got mm, 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 mm. it was notifications from Twitter. He had shouted me out. Like, man, look out for corporate. He up next. Ooh, wow. And yeah. then retweeted my own phone now, joint. Yeah. And I'm just like, damn, we had never met a day in our lives. Yeah, I that was a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't even meet him till like two or three months after that. It was at a um, Fake Sure Drive event. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, they anniversary. Yeah, over in uh, Wicker Park, they did mm-hmm. that little pop up. Yep. Yeah, went to their little joint or whatever. You know what I'm saying the whole city was out there. Shout out the bump. He definitely one of my folks that support mm-hmm. me to the fullest. Like, he's a real friend hmm. for real, for real. That's but cool. um, Chance uh, he just re- came up to me, just told me how much he was merely rocking with my shit. You feel me? And wanted to. Chop it up, you know what I'm saying? Gave me his line, 
He was like, man, just hit me up. Ooh, ooh. And a few weeks later, you know what I'm saying? I met up with him at the store. Had a one-on-one for like 45 minutes just telling him what I aspire to do and what he see for me in the future. And he was just letting me know how much he support me and shit. Like, it was it was a blessing. Yeah, and it was really cool seeing you come through Open Mic, too, because we haven't done a whole lot of screenings. Mm-hmm. We actually did the short film, the Drive Slow. If you haven't seen that, you should go back to the Terrence Thompson episode. But then mm-hmm. we also screened like two or three of your videos. Um, how... How did it feel to see it with an audience watching it? An audience of young people from Chicago? Because I feel like you probably haven't been in a like a room of 300 people watching it much. Man, I have to say that was probably one of the highlights of this whole journey. You hmm. know what I'm saying? I didn't expect Chance to put on for me like that. Like, to you, like, tell him, like, man, bring a wound. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit came down quick, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's got this auditorium full of people, and they just playing my videos, and we on stage going back and forth, and he just let me know how much he Millie rocking. Like, <sighs> words can't express, man. Shout out to bro. So if there was one person, either in the city or, or in the world, that you would want to see these videos, who do you think that would be? Kanye. I'm, I'm, I, I feel a way. About Kanye, but I still love him. <laughs> yeah. True. Like, so I, I would like to see how he felt about the video. <laughs> oh, God. Who would you want to put in a video? Besides Kanye. No. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, God. Um, I feel like that's how you end up with a 15 minute video that you didn't even mean. Man. It's like, no, you got to keep it. It's like his vocals on everything. I, I really be, I really be um, appreciating, you know what I'm saying, having um, decent women in the videos, particularly. Those that are slugging, you see me. So, um, I look forward to putting Laney Pop in a video, um, <laughs> and a few other uh, women in the city. I like, so. I like you got real quiet. <laughs> oh God, de- definitely. And then you pop. <laughs> oh God, Chicago culture. Oh, my kids. <laughs> so let, let's. Uh, we talked about like kind of where you was, uh, freshman sophomore year, if. Uh, if corporate could talk to that dude, right? Like, what, like what, six to fifteen year old you, what would what, you? Tell what, what would you? I'd be like, bro, sit you your lame ass <laughs> down, bro. Like you trying too hard. Yeah. Do your work. Shut up. <laughs> Stop being so worried about whether motherfuckers like you or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just do you. The best way for you to be is to actually, you need to establish relationships with adults <laughs> outside of high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Tend like like groom your mind, hmm. like get more focused. Like man, I I would have treated his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Some so, so we talk about a lot to what you just said that we that we struggle to figure out. Like I think we get it on like a mental level, but like in our emotions, the the that ability to not worry about people's perception of you. Man, look, man, so once you, you, you stop you, worrying, that's when they care. You, like you know what I'm saying. When you don't care about friends, that's when they want to be your friends. How did you, so? You feel you at that point? How Absolutely. Did, how did I've you, been at that point for a while. How did you get to that? Like, what, I think I, I think what, I really really changed? realized that shit. Um, my senior year in high school, like mm-hmm. crossing over into college, I start. I think I found the key to life. Like you know what I'm saying? Like just you really. We just waited till the fifty second minute. Oh god! Minute to get the key to life. The key to life. Like you know. Like what I'm, I'm not saying? gonna tell you, but I found it. I found that motherfucker. <laughs> like you really just have to be in your own world. You 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 hmm. can't be too much influenced about what's going on around you. Like when you just in your own world, and you, I have to be in my own world to do what I'm doing. So hmm. many people feel like I should do it this way, do it that way, or hmm. uh, before turning their nose up and shit like that. Like I do me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And whoever gonna rock, they gonna rock. And, and whoever don't, well, shit, have a good one. But that means having a lot of trust in yourself. Absolutely. It's definitely a, a, um, a self-esteem thing, too. And I, and I think at some point I had low self-esteem. Yeah. And I just had to really realize my worth. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and how and, and, and my importance. So it's like I, I'm my own, like, best fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? And even then in life general, like, my daughters adore me. So because of that, I don't get no fuck <laughs> who don't fuck I was going to ask about that, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? As long as I know they rocks with me, yeah. I'm decent. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. How old are they now, if you want to say? Yeah. I have a seven-year-old. She'll be eight in March. And then I have a one-year-old. That'll oh be two um, April 12th. Shout out to them. Yeah, oh, my kids, yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> you finally have a kid to put something on. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you worry me so much. More <laughs> right. Oh, my kids. <laughs> I feel like that's why people started saying, Oh, baby, because everybody just thought they was lying all the time. Oh, God. So, yeah. 
real. So I think on this my, particular yeah. baby, <laughs> <laughs> on my actual baby. Fact. Uh, you you got one or two more? Or we gonna get to the nah, game. Let's go into the game. Let's All right, I'm excited to do this one with you, man. Because usually, you know, we have 50 minutes of like, you know, somebody talking about their protest campaign or their poems or some. Uh, and then we we have to switch it up, but this this feels a little bit more at home. This is what this is all about. This game is is the cornerstone of our show. It's the okay. most important work we're doing, oh, and so it's nice. about accountability. Mm-hmm. And so I feel that there is a sect of the world that has run amok, especially mm. in my lifetime, and that is R and B singers. Indeed. <laughs> wow, no hesitation. You're on board. <laughs> you already know. So every week we try to ask our guests to start beef with at least one R and B singer. And why? Beef with the R&B singer. And with R- corporate. R. Kelly's the reason the game exists. He's already in the rat, and Chris Brown's n- number is retired. So they're up on the board. Oh, God. Okay. So who else? Any era? You can go back to, to Motown. Motown, to the present. Man, that's that that's random. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. You, oh, you thought you man. knew what we were about here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I... Oh man, run a muck. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something I forgot. A ponder on. <laughs> like, hmm, somebody to start beef with. <sighs> okay. Um. Damn, that's a good one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry. Take your time. Sheesh. Now this is important. We can wait. Oh man, <laughs> it's, no, it's no problem. I'm chilling. <laughs> Start a beef with an R and B singer. That's funny as shit. Um, funny AF actually. I'm a, I'm gonna see if I can come back to that. I really oh, have well, to that's fine. let that simmer. That's fine. We'll let the, we'll let that right, sit. All right. We usually don't let people we don't, the hook we on don't. it. Oh, that's that's a very <laughs> special privilege. You I honor that. Shit. I think oh, I'm gonna we go. I'm gonna shoot that shot again before we get okay, up out of here. But less. but <laughs> one time, you know, we talked a lot, and it kind of falls to the to the to the background a little bit. But the reason why you say you do all of this is because of the bars, right? Or that's how it at least all started. Mm-hmm. And so if if you can. You know, we we allow we allow to get some of them bars real quick, oh, and I can give you an instrumental if you want, you or go, you could go acapella. acapella. It's up to you. They feel beat. it when it's acapella. I, I, okay, like I, really I, I, <laughs> go ahead then. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, <clears throat> let's see here. Fun fact: I don't write anything. No pen, no paper ever. Like mm. you know, what I'm saying, I, even if I wrote the raps down. I, I don't think I will be able to remember them. Like I, like Jay Z said, pull words out the air like Bluetooth. Like I really do that shit. Like, mm-hmm. and I think that keeps my mind sharp and also keeps my the sportsmanship of the rap shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you started from jump. You, you... Um, when I first started, I started off doing spoken word. I was writing, oh, but okay. um, I say since 2009, it's just just been oh, coming. We didn't like... even get into the spoken word. Oh man, oh, have you left that in the in the rearview mirror? At this Honestly, point? the way I write my raps. They majority of them can be recited as spoken word because that's just how I write. Where where was before you spent? Where where was you doing? Like what spaces or community were you doing your spoken word? Um, there, I know they used to have something called the Negro League Cafe. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's open anymore. I know mm-hmm. I did some spoken word there. Um, I I, I can't recall the events, but um, I know the spoken word started my junior year in high school. And and I was a hustler in high school, so I seen that they had a two hundred dollar cash prize for mm. whoever would you know what I'm saying rock the poetry slam. So that was the first time I had ever um, composed something, and I I still remember it until how, this day. How'd you do? Did you, in, in I the slam? fucked them up. But what's crazy <laughs> is they didn't see it coming. Like the first the round, and the second round, because the third oh, round, I, see with the po- like- I had wrote that poem the night before, and I <laughs> mm-hmm. choked. Mm. And that was the only reason I lost. Like it hurt to so this day, bad. I hear it. I hear like, it. You know what I'm saying? It, I, I'm like, emotionally. I'm the, best. the city knows me. I'm <laughs> like, but this poetry slam, <laughs> like in '09. <laughs> you feel me? I'm still hurt about that. But oh man, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that hurt your heart so much. You know, right, we gonna like, let we gonna let you rock that. Oh God. <clears throat> Watch my stock go straight through the ceiling. Bail money up, cause I'm finna make a killing. First 48 niggas try and get me caught up. Trust no man, just the way your niggas brought up. I grew up 
Watching a foe shake up. After school fights, the chaperones, the breakup. They take it to the streets to the block all taped up. We gon' need a reverend. I'ma have to call Mace up. Caught him on the corner. Slumped him, left him face up. Mama looking over her face down. It's the ambulance race now. Ain't nothing new to this great town. Shy city, far from the adjective. They run up in your crib. Now you gotta go pack again. Once you get a job, now they raising the tax again. Once you get a raise, now they raising the gas again. Losing for winning. Pac said, that's just the way it is. And just play your cards right I'm playing my hand out Pockets on halftime I'm bringing them bands out I know that line was slight work But fuck it I'ma float to the pipe burst Cranberry Ciroc A loose bitch in a tight skirt Is all I need To find out what my night's worth Whole time Pete Cause if I get to hit them curves, I ain't stopping for roll signs. Real nigga born in 80-something, I'm just trying to make me something. Hustle for a living, I be pushing like the baby coming. Flowing like my water broke, but I got two daughters though. That's four of my priorities, but they not in that order though. I do not pay child support, cause I am my child support. I do what the fuck I gotta do for mass. Without the courts, life to the single mothers, death to the deadbeats. Ladies, watch out for them niggas, keep them out your bed sheets. I know over everything is lost to this life shit. Like love is a trip, but you can't fall for that type. Shit. Hey, hey yeah. go crazy. Yeah, actually, I heard like in the middle a lot of like vintage Kanye flow. Seriously, yeah, I was yeah, having the same yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah. You've been, you, you've yeah, been yeah. listening to uh, some, some all down over there. <laughs> <laughs> it all oh, fell God. down. A now back stuff. to it, nigga. What's up with this R&B <laughs> beef? You thought I was bullshit? <laughs> oh my kid. Um, <laughs> I think. Uh, R&B singer that I'm talking about. Uh, 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 R&B, R&B. Um, I love yep. that you haven't hesitated for a moment on anything. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I, I, I think, feel like it's somebody in the back of your head that you hesitate to say. I would have definitely hood put them out there. You feel me? I ain't got no filter on my kids. <laughs> But I think with that question, I I realized that I guess I, I have a heavy appreciation for r and As do I. I which feel is like, why I'm holding them accountable. Like, I, I feel <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's the R&B is what, you know what I'm saying, makes motherfuckers calm down, mm. love a little. You know what See, I'm saying? See, that's why the like, game is not beef with R&B. It's beef with an R&B singer. Oh, God. Wow. You know Damon Somebody Kennedy is taking ready. away from the, the purpose of R&B. That's it's, who I need exactly, to be. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Someone who has who has corrupted the game. Corrupted. That's the what game. I feel they've all done. See, see the where, where the game come from is like if a rapper do some whack shit, they either get discarded or they gonna get a a, a, a beef track, right? If somebody jump out their body and kind of like, oh god, it's not on some hip hop shit. There's some accountability within the culture, but I feel like the R and B shit just has has run amok. There's no other way. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. The niggas run uh, so. Oh god. We'll have to have you back. <sighs> This is this this is this is a disappointment right here. This is, I, I, man, hey, man, I'm, no, I'm trying to my deliver. Are hurt. Oh my hey, god! Like, like, be nice. Uh, He's been great. He's I'm been trying great. to deliver. You <laughs> feel me? Like I, I want it with, to be accurate. Right, like right. who am I really like not drawing uh, off of? Like your ass uh, tweaking yeah, type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, well, we can expand it to another genre. Okay, that's let's fine. say uh, we'll, we'll we'll include a rapper, a singer of any kind, a performer, a comedian, just a, a public figure. We need some beef though. We got to have some. And it can be beef. lightweight beef. Yeah, it, it could be in, in, in tongue and cheek. <sighs> okay, now we, we talking about rap. Well, um, actually, as far as rap, I'm going to say I fake. I fake get beef with all the rappers <laughs> in the city, the local rappers, low key, because... Motherfuckers sleeping on me, and I felt, and I, and I, and I speak on some of the shit in some of my raps and some of the future raps that I had. Like I think a lot of motherfuckers be trying to, yeah, whole time. Fuck you, talking about. Look, a lot of motherfuckers. I think they be insisting about me being a comedian because they know they can't fuck with me on a rap shit. Mm. Like I'm real humble, but when it come to that rap shit, motherfuckers can't see me. Mm. They can't fucking mm. see me. You know, if you so that's with for every rapper in the city, that's a lot of people. Fuck. Fuck you talking about? <laughs> like the the rap, like it's a lot of rappers that I'm friends with. You know what I'm saying, and they and they know how I'm coming. But the ones that and they know who they are, they really just be like trying to sleep on me. Like man, he just funny. Woo, woo I got beef with you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I'm saying, and and I'm personally speaking to you. Can't fucking see me. Like I'm godly with this. I mean, shit. it is a podcast. They cannot see. You. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Figuratively and literally. <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even on my YouTube, like, five years ago, I was battle rapping. Mm. Like, and that was my first time even battle rapping in. Like, I am a heavy, heavy student and follower of the URL culture. Like, you know what I'm saying? I love words and I love putting them together. God, mm. look over anybody that try to diss me on the track, bro. <laughs> God, please be with them. With that. <laughs> yeah, you never just pray. <laughs> you hear me like, because if they worth responding to, they're fucked. Yeah. Like, so yeah, that's who my beef with. Any rapper in the city that's sleeping on me, I got beef with That you. was and the you. first prayerful beef we've had. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. God. Like, prayerful beef. <laughs> it's been on God the whole time. Bro. I'm going to be saying it. <laughs> on God. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's we can wind any, uh, any last, any plugs that you want to put out yeah, here? Anything well, you want people, where can they find you? Obviously. You know, on God. Social, shit. Anything it's coming corporate up. with a K. Type in corporate. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, I'm out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you haven't purchased any of my t-shirts, my clothing line is active, advancedplacementlife.com. Um, shout out to um King Louie and Chance for being in the uh, commercial. Um, definitely That's be cool. looking out for new content. Yeah. Um, that shit's on the way. I appreciate my investors and stockholders and those that, you know what I'm saying, those that, you know what I'm saying, support everything that I got going on. I feel like the word fan is demeaning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With me being a business, everybody that supports me, they own pieces of me mm. and That's they cool. keep me going. You mm. know what I'm saying? So I refer to them as investors and stockholders. So definitely shout out to my investors and stockholders and when my folks be calling me comedians in the comments, they be coming through like, nah, he a rapper the whole time. So my folks definitely <laughs> you got be just, like, just an army of uh, yeah, correctors. Yeah, the investors and stockholders be, you know what I'm saying they be keeping my shit alive and uh man shout out to chicago man yeah i just man i, I, I do got one more question before we get out of because because you, you said it a few times mm -hmm. you never see yourself going for comedy it's ova like and it's because i my heart is Down not in line? it okay like i can't do stand-up i can be funny in the midst of conversation how about sketch like someone else that you or you write them and oh yeah yeah i mean that's yeah. what you, that's that counts oh god okay yeah, in that, that case i'll definitely write for other people but yeah. i i love rapping so much i could cry about it mm. so i can't really get into that comedian shit you know what mm. i'm saying too much it's fun i i act like to be an actor like you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying i'm with it but as far as like stand up and just being a kevin hart it's cooked True. It's cooked. Thanksgiving passed already, but it's still cooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's another turkey for Christmas. You know? <laughs> you <hit me. laughs> we should get up out of yeah, here. Thank you so much for being here. Man, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate you. Happy for holidays me. to everybody. Make sure that you uh, follow corporate on all the things. It's corporate double zero. Is that right on Twitter? Um, or uh, shit, when well, my trap booming so much and motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, putting my name in and the search inquiry so high, you could just put corporate anywhere with and I'm K, popping up. That's a that's a, a that's a, an excellent flex right there. right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like y'all, I'm flexing. <laughs> Fuck you, talking about corporate everywhere and uh, huh. YouTube because and everything was a process. So it's like that's why I speak on it so boldly. Mm -hmm. Like even crossing over to YouTube, that, that was hard. That was yeah. a struggle. My mm -hmm. YouTube fake busting. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. Like you could put my name in and I'm coming up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, man. Well, you're going to have to there. type our full thing at Ergo Radio. We're not quite on that level yet, oh, but you God. should definitely man, follow us. Man, slow motion better than no motion. Absolutely. <laughs> slow equals smooth. smooth. You hit me? Slow equals smooth. Smooth equals fast. You oh, God. There you go. Thank you so much for being here. Man, thank you so much. We'll be back in the new year with another conversation from Chicago and beyond. Much love to the people. Oh, Peace. Y'all be safe. <laughs> <laughs>